What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the Shire, and welcome back to the Live Your Legend LARP cast, the only LARP cast that really hopes we make it to our 111st birthday. I am your <laughs> humble DM, Danny Coy, back once again with Gandalf the Wish I Wasn't So Gray, Tommy Donovan. That's true, I'm very gray. <laughs> good evening, sir. And thank you for having me once again at your retail establishment. Did you have a good week? Uh, I had a pretty good week. Yeah. Oh, always good to hear. Um, just to let the readers at no home at home know... Uh, you've kind of been doing a little Googling, and you found a list of words that you're not sure. And yeah, Typically when I Google, I get myself in trouble. I end up at the, the deepest, darkest points of the Internet, and I get lost, and then I have to call the police on myself, and it's, it's no good. It's, it's, no, no good. it's not a good time. But this particular time, you've been a little bit uh, proactive in, in your LARP interest, and you found a list of words that you don't really understand. I have. Some of these look familiar to me Absolutely. as if I have seen them Elsewhere, these runes mean something to you. But I honestly, I have a feeling they probably mean a little something different. More than likely, because I like the first word I ran across, uh, mundane. Yeah. Which to me is what the characters in the Fables comic call people who are non-magical. You're really close there. Okay. Believe it or not, um, your your kind of your your backgrounds are intersecting, and that's great. <laughs> um, what that means, a mundane is a person or object that exists outside of a LARP. Okay. So the best way to describe that is, uh, for those of you who are not aware, we record this on a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. That is a mundane object. But it's really fancy. It is a really fancy phone. <laughs> I'm really jealous of your phone. But uh, it's a mundane object because it exists outside of the realms of what's possible within a LARP. Okay. Um, cell phones, keys, um, anything that's really anachronistic, um, that's another word, anachronism, is out of time period. Those are things that we're going to consider mundane. And also people that encounter upon a LARP site. Many LARPs are held at public places, open parks. People outside of the realm of LARP, non-players, are also considered mundane people. And then hilarity ensues. Absolutely. Well, we've had a lot of, we have a lot of people that watch and really get interested, and their children get interested, and the adults get interested because the children get interested. And it's a really great way to introduce a new hobby to a family. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. So, all right. So you, you explain Monday. I get that. Right. That, that makes sense to me. So high immersion, low immersion, which I believe are, are phrases that you used last we, time. We talked a little bit about high immersion and low immersion. Right. Um, For me, immersion uh, feels like you're being waterboarded either in a really serious way or in a kind of fun way. That's exactly what LARP is like. Um, <laughs> it goes with the joke that says uh, uh, waterboarding at Guantanamo Bay. It sounds really fun if you don't know what either of those things are. <laughs> Uh, we'll start with high immersion because that's typically where people start. High immersion is a LARP that is really heavy on costuming, really heavy on acting, really heavy on props, so that it's easier to suspend your disbelief and... Sure, yeah, the, these are the, the LARPs that I've seen on like TV shows and movies. Absolutely, it's the higher production value LARP. They're kind of the crown jewel of the LARP world, and they're what most people want the media and we want the the public eye to shift towards because it's a very serious and very understandable and very beautiful form of expression the, and those are the ones that the felicia days flock to correct uh, the felicia days of the world on um, the johnny depps of the world most european larps are high immersion i'm not sure why but generally their costuming and their their weapon creation tends to be a little bit higher well i mean quality. in europe everything's you know 10 times older than it is over here, so they just go to their grandma's closet. It's fairly easy. And, and you know, and there's they, costumes done. They LARP in real castles. It's, it's a good time. <laughs> All right, so low immersion then would be something uh, a little less serious? A little, not necessarily less serious. I okay. Think serious denotes a, a tone and a level of re respect and regard for a game. Low immersion is something that doesn't have as high of a costume requirement. You're going to see more pool noodles wrapped around PVC pipe, which we talked about last episode. You're going to see more t-shirts. You're going to see more tennis shoes. You're going to see more people running to their cars and getting things. You're going to see more people coming in and out of their characters. Because it's a... I hate to say lower standard because it seems like a subclass, but it's a lower standard of acceptance. Gotcha. It's definitely the more budget option. Um, it's definitely budget friendly. Totally budget friendly. A, a low immersion LARP, you can very easily get by with a pair of scrubs for your bottoms and a brown T-shirt for your top. Um, that's how I started my first LARP, and most LARPs 
tend to edge toward the side of low immersion. Not only because it's difficult for your player base to be able to afford to get into a high immersion LARP, but it's also very expensive for a chapter or a system to be a, a high immersion LARP. Sure, that makes sense. Absolutely. You have a lot of words there. I'm just not I do. To list. Like, uh, the next few I understand because I've played a lot of role-playing games in my life. Sure. We've got PCs, NPCs, and GMs. Okay. Well, uh, looking at your list, NPC is on the top. We'll start there. NPC is another... This is an initialism where LARP is an acronym. This is an initialism. Okay. Because NPC is not a word. But an NPC is a non-player character. What that means is someone, not a mundane, someone within the realm of the LARP, that is a character being controlled by the chapter or system. Mm -hmm. So random goblin number five that has come to eat your face and swing swords at you, that is an NPC. The, the uh, guild owner that you've been dealing with and buying weapons from, he is also an NPC. The manager of the tavern is an NPC, and all of the random monsters, the giant big baddie at the end of the adventure, are also NPCs. Okay. The other side of that coin is the PC, the player character, another initialism. Um, the PC is a player character, which means anyone that is not being controlled by a governing body, such as you when you're ready to go to your first LARP. Right. You will be a PC, a player character. You will have paid your fee. You will have created your own character. Your own creative power will be your driving force. And you will go and play your PC character. Um, a GM is somebody like me. That's a game master. Typically, if you're lucky, you can get multiple game masters per LARP. It makes things m run much more smoothly. In LARPs like mine, we subdivide up our duties and requirements and have different people with different specialties. And all of those people are considered staff or game masters. A game master is anyone who in any way directly influences the flow of game from an out-of-game standpoint. Okay, that all makes sense. Whether they write plot, whether they create monsters, whether they hide objects, those, those are all ways that directly affect game from an out-of-game standpoint. Okay. All right, so uh, the next the next thing that I have written down here uh, sounds like something that would happen on the set of a movie of uh, less than reputable standards. Uh, a, a buffer? A, a, a buffer, B-O-F-F-E-R, not a fluffer. We're very close. A buffer, okay, those are, those are sim it's very similar. It I is a confused. similar word. A buffer is a weapon. It is a foam, typically latex foam or open cell foam with a rigid cord weapon. Um, that is anything from a sword to an axe to a rapier to a... Even shields are considered boffers because okay. they're made safe for simulated combat. And there are different types of boffers, of course, but that's not something we really need to get into. But that's basically it. It's just a weapon, something that you can bop people with. You can boff people with, and that's the term, <laughs> is boffing. Um, okay. For the simulated combat. It's any, uh, any simulated weapon. All right. Excellent. Now, the next one I... I really have no idea. Fizz rep? Perfect. Uh, that was kind of. Ex I was expecting you to strip up on the pronunciation, but you got it perfect. I I'm good at grammars. You can grammars. Are I, you? I, I as good as grammars. Are you not too tired to English? I am good at the pronounce Englishing. Yes. So a fizz rep is short for a physical representation. Okay. What a fizz rep is and the purpose it serves is it physically represents an object that exists within the LARP universe. Fizz rep can be anything, provided it is roughly the same size shape of the object you're attempting to represent. So I'm searching for a medallion, and I go to the place where the medallion is, and I find a physical representation of said medallion. Exactly. If you're searching for a dragon egg, you might find a balloon covered in paper mache. Okay. If you are raiding an ancient tomb, uh, personal experience here, if you're raiding an ancient tomb and find a sarcophagus, it might be a dining room table turned upside down with a sheet draped over it. <laughs> That's a low immersion solution. <laughs> but it, it physically represents an object that otherwise cannot be represented. You don't. There's no such thing as a dragon egg, unfortunately. Um, Hagrid, if you're listening, I would really like a dragon egg. Yeah, it says you. <laughs> I'm not attached to the beard. Norbert can... <laughs> but... What a, uh, a fizz rep just represents something that can't be otherwise put forward. Okay. And I imagine that helps with the kind of getting more realism. 
absolutely you, know, you can have a physical thing you can touch people want things in their hands and i can see just a couple items down your list we have the opposite of the fizz rep we'll, okay. we'll get to that when you're ready, whenever right. you're ready so the next thing I, I assume is just skinny people that play ultralight not quite a lot of skinny <laughs> people use ultralights an ultralight is a type of boffer okay but what an ultralight is is a boff boff type weapon that has been made with the lightest components possible Typically, this means more expense, uh, higher-end open-cell foam, uh, higher-end kite tape or carbon fiber rods for uh, your core. But because of the way simulated combat work, ultralights move incredibly quickly. And because you're not attempting to inflict actual damage, if you are, you're LARPing wrong, because you can move more quickly, you can deal more hit point damage. Speed okay. is the name of the game when it comes to LARP combat. So an ultralight is the the Rolls Royce of homemade weapons. They typically gotcha. cost a lot more. They cost way more than your pool noodle wrapped around PVC. <laughs> but they do produce quantifiable results. All right. Uh, I guess there's a lot of uh, graffiti. Is the next word I have is tags? That's the opposite of the fizz rep. Where everything, not everything in a LARP has to be physically represent, represented, but we try. We okay. do our very best. Yeah, I imagine it's hard to get like a Scottish keep. Absolutely. Um, a tag is, for LARP sense, I'm trying to find the best way to explain this to a newbie. For a LARP sense, a tag which is a small scrap of paper with stats written on it. Typically it's a card filled out, uh, like an index card with fillable spaces. Sure. It is, that is the object. So if you, Tommy Donovan the lovable mage, uh, has picked up a magic orb of awesome, and you sit the orb, the, the plot needs the orb for whatever. They need the magical orb of epic to put out into the woods, so you have to give up your fizz rep. You still have the tag that denotes that you have the magical orb of awesome and what it many factors about the magical orb of awesome. If you go to sleep at 2 a.m., as people do at a LARP, and a sneaky, sneaky, sneak thief comes into your cabin with the appropriate staff member present to ensure that no funny business goes awry, and he pickpockets you, what he will take is not the fizz rep because the fizz rep is no longer there. He will take the tag. Okay. And when he takes the tag, he takes possession of that object. The other side of that coin is, if you still have the fizz rep, and the thief swipes the fizz rep, he very obviously has, has gained control over that object. At the nearest applicable point, you will hand over the tag. The tag is what follows characters throughout campaigns, not necessarily the fizz rep. Gotcha. Okay. Most, most all things in LARPs are tagged. Because it proves ownership and you have ways to track currency and items and he stole this from me. No, he didn't. I have the tag. And it's also a way to keep out-of-game objects, things that people bought and paid for and brought to a LARP, such as weapons or armor or food or anything like that. You don't have to put your hands on anyone else's physical property. You can take a tag instead. That makes sense. Uh, so <clears throat> everything gets tagged. And mostly... the. More often than not, the, the tags will travel with your character. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing along the same line, spell packet is a... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a real guess here. Is a physical representation... You're getting better. ...of a magical spell. You're absolutely correct. I'm getting good at this game. You, you're, you're winning already. You're ahead in points. You're, you're leading the league. A spell packet for the majority of LARP games begins its life as a 4x4 four four square of fabric and roughly a teaspoon of birdseed. Okay. The fabric is then rolled around the bird seed, and a rubber band is tied at the base so that you have a taut package of bird seed wrapped in fabric with a small tail on it. Mm -hmm. These are thrown uh, to denote thrown spells. They also help prevent touching between people. Some people don't like to be touched. That's fair. So if I were to touch cast a spell, such as a life spell or a healing spell, I would hold the spell packet... I, those of you at home can't see this, unfortunately. I would hold a spell packet in my hands, and it would act as a barrier between my fingers and the other player. So that I never physically make contact with that player, but I'm still able to touch cast. <coughs> Excuse me. 
they also can represent small any small thrown object, a rock, a dagger even, because it's a, a, an object that is safe to be thrown. And okay. they're relatively standardized, and they're also fairly biodegradable so that inevitably when they get lost, because every LARP starts an event with a thousand spell packets and ends the event with 887, <laughs> they are relatively biodegradable so that they don't harm the environment. That's excellent. So the next thing I have here, I actually know what it is because you showed me a character sheet in the past. Absolutely. Um, oddly enough, character sheet was not on paper. That's true. So it's a little bit different for our system because we've created some infrastructure. But the term is character sheet. Mm -hmm. A character sheet is essentially the tag for you. It is a tag that denotes your character. I mean, that happened to me when I was little, but they let me back out in the wild. <laughs> Do you, are, are you still microchipped? <laughs> Do we have to take you to the SPCA? I don't, I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> well, I think your checkup is coming soon, so you may have to. <laughs> but... The character sheet is basically a tag that denotes your character. It will list all of your stats. It will list your health points. It will very often list, give a list of the items you have. And it will give various details about your character. It is essentially, the easiest way to put it, is it's your character's soul. In most games, if you do not have direct, immediate access to your character sheet, you are effectively dead. Wow. Wow. This makes it really easy to check up on rules calls. I hit you 14 times. You only have 12 hit points. No, I have 15 hit points. Prove it. Here's my character sheet. It helps keep track of things immensely. It helps cut down on the nefarious kind of... I'll say it. It cuts down on cheating. And it also helps you track and grow your progress. Same with any... Like a tabletop game. It's very gratifying to fill in those little numbers. And sure, and when you level up... Absolutely. Yeah. So right. that's what a character sheet is. Well, that, that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, however, the word jink sounds vaguely like something that we shouldn't say. I'm not, I'm not sure. Believe it or not, that word in the past two or three years has only come into existence because it, 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 the word used to be the other thing, which we will not repeat here. Oh. Um, I will give the hint that it does have racial connotations. That's... Okay. And it's wildly inappropriate. Jinkies. So, exactly, Daphne. That, that term has become to popularity because many, many, many LARPs across the world are phasing out the former term. Mm -hmm. And what jink is, is in-game coin. Okay. More often, than it, the term comes from the fact that most people put metal coins in a pouch and tie it to their side, and when they run through the woods, it's jink, 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 Yeah, it jink, makes jink. a very specific sound. Absolutely. Um... So it's become slang for in-game money. In the same way that someone would say, give me a buck. Yeah, and you um, hand them a deer. Well, sometimes. Depends entirely <laughs> on your social circle. But uh, give me a buck. Give me a dinero. Yeah. Uh, same way as how much jink does it cost? What's the jink? Also a good, good way of saying what's the reward if I, if I complete this quest? What's the jink? Okay. All right, so um, the next couple of things seem to go together, in character and out of character. Very, very easy to explain. So Kind of self-explanatory, but they're a little bit deeper than most people get into. At the surface, and this is the self-explanatory level, in character means a person that is currently playing a LARP as a character, mm -hmm. and out of character means a, cur a person that is currently not playing a LARP as a character. What we're having right now is an out-of-character conversation. Okay. If we were to immediately assume personas that we had previously written up, which we haven't, unfortunately. I wish I had that level of preparation. That would become an in-character conversation. So what you're telling me is that this extravagant costume I'm wearing was not necessary today. Yeah, the camera didn't make it in time. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it, the rental fee is really going to bite you. It's chafing. <laughs> the tights are a bad option. But um, this is an out-of-character conversation. An in-character conversation would be between two characters. Where it gets a little bit deeper is that there are in-character actions and out-of-character actions. Most LARPs, due to safety and privacy and a million other reasons we are fairly self-explanatory, using the restroom is an out-of-character action. That you, makes perfect sense. You exist outside of the LARP 
while you are in that situation. However, going to sleep is an in-character action. You still exist within the realm of the LARP while you are asleep. One of the biggest controversies that my personal game has had lately is the discussion over whether or not having a cigarette was an in-character action or an out-of-character action. Are you exempt from combat? Are you exempt from things going on because you have to have a cigarette? What we ultimately decided is that having a cigarette is an in-character action. Smoking was not only available but prevalent in the Middle Ages. Absolutely. <clears throat> Typically it was not with rolling papers, it was with a pipe. Sure. But the understanding is still there that your care it's very easy to to understand that a character would also smoke. So you have the in character, out of character actions. You go a little bit deeper than that, and you have in character and out of character knowledge. If you and I are sitting like we are in a comic shop across the table, out of character, and I say, Tommy, I'm so excited. I've invited you to this uh, LARP event that's coming up soon, and I'm writing plot for it. And here are six or seven amazing things and fantastic beasts that you're going to get to see at this LARP event that is out of character knowledge. So Tommy, the comic shop manager, knows these things. Tommy the mage, your in-character persona, does not know these things. And therefore, he cannot act upon these things. If Tommy the, the innocent mage has a deathly fear of manticores, and Tommy the comic shop manager has been told that a manticore will make an appearance, Tommy the innocent mage cannot suddenly vanish because he knows that a manticore will be there. Because Tommy the innocent mage doesn't know that a manticore will be there. No, but that sounds terrifying. It a manticore is a terrifying feat for even a group of LARPers to take on. So, and we call the action of breaching that gap between the two metagaming, and it is essentially viewed as cheating in the LARP world. It's insider betting, as you will. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to role-playing games, where if you've run through a module... Before. Before, and then you're running through it again with a bunch of people who've never done it before, and you're like, well, everybody, go check that corner for that special thing that no one knows about but me. Or, you know, I go and check and, and get this special thing. Right. It makes perfect sense. Absolutely. So, at the surface, they seem pretty self-explanatory. Yes. A person is either in character or out of character, but there are a little... There are some... A little gray area in there. Absolutely. Just a little bit. Yep. All right. So, this one, I'm, I don't know uh, if you guys breed dragons or uh, the dragon chariots... Well, it's the way I'm looking at it here, it's a, either a dragon or a chariot. You've probably heard them referenced equally. The, the sentence, I wish to procure a beverage from my chariot, sounds a whole lot cooler than I'm going to go grab a, tr a Coke from the trunk of my car. <laughs> Cars are so prevalent. Everybody gets to a LARP to a, via car. Very sure. few people carport. So if you've got 60 people at a LARP event, you probably have about 55 vehicles there. And there's no easy way to explain away a car. Very few LARP sites have far and away parking lots where these things can be tucked away and forgotten. It's very easy to explain away uh, a chariot. That is my chariot. The dragon term kind of came as a little bit of a joke. It started with airplanes. Look, Felix, a dragon. <laughs> and then it kind of extended to cars because cars move and sure. there's anachronism there. The dragon term is more of a joke, but chariot is definitely used to denote a a a car, an out-of-game object. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, Alright, lesser and greater unslept. Oh, this is a fun term. There's an old saying, and by old I mean I learned this two years ago, <laughs> that says, sleep is for the weak, but we LARP on the weekends. <laughs> a lesser or greater unslept is a person who has spent either 24, 48, or 72 hours without having a decent amount of sleep. And they begin to generally act and look like a zombie. That's that's my whole life. Every day. So you'll do well. <laughs> People want to stay up and they want to experience the action and they want to experience the kinship. And they don't really want to lose eight hours to a nap. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So by the end of Sunday, typically LARP events last from Friday, Saturday through Sunday. By the end of Sunday, people are dragging their feet and kind of groaning a little bit and the dark circles under the eyes and their <laughs> costumes don't look nearly as good as they did on Friday. Well, they had to fight a manticore. Of course, they, of course they don't look as good. Absolutely. So 
the lesser or greater unslept. The lesser unslept is the person who's been up for 48 hours, and the greater unslept is the person that's been up for 72. That's where the joke came from. We had a friend who was currently playing the role of the greater unslept. At the end of an event, was asked to go sweep Monster Camp. And he returned and said, Monster Camp has been sweeped. And someone responded, Monster Camp has been swept. To which my friend replied, I'm too tired to grammar. <laughs> All right, well, this next thing is really exciting for me. Donut? Donut. Tommy, I eat people like you for breakfast. You're a donut. Ew. It's a noob. Um, oh. Uh, someone who's not really capable in the LARP. Uh, they're, they're easy to hit. They're slow moving. They are not interested. They're not paying attention to their surroundings. Typically, it's a new player. doesn't have to be. I've seen a lot of veterans that, that pass as donuts. They're just kind of a useless person or of little use, and they get kind of trampled on and... You know, we all know that the saying, I eat people like you for breakfast. Donut is a fairly easy to procure LARP breakfast item. And it sounds delicious. It is. They're, typically there's filling. So do you keep them in your backpack? No, but the backpack helps take care of the donuts. Okay. Um, a backpack, oh, I'm looking at your list. Um, the, the next term is also directly related to the backpack. Uh, the backpack is the mage that stands behind the fighter and makes sure he doesn't die. Okay. There is a, typically a large fighter with a shield and a sword or an axe or a spear or whatever who is fighting off the hordes of goblins that want to fling poop and throw swords. Poop throwing goblins every time. We had to create an entire damage facet in our system. <laughs> that is the poop damage facet because we had so many goblins coming into game. But the person standing directly behind them, muttering under his breath and continually touching the person with a spell packet, that is the backpack. He's okay. typically a healer or a general mage who is helping that <coughs> excuse you, who is helping that fighter do what he needs to do through buffs, through healing, through whatever means necessary. And they typically stay so close that they kind of look like a person backpack. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to soap on a rope. The in early LARP days, uh, the magic was explained away in that it was transferred through physical objects. This took extra, extra prevalent in the multinational Nero system, mm -hmm. and the players very quickly took advantage of this. So, Brutus, the big fighter, ties a 50-foot section of rope around his waist. That rope then acts as a conduit to the mage who's standing 50 feet back, <laughs> way out of the fray. So he's safe. And they cast spells through the rope. It's be it's become a secondary term for a backpack, but it's way fu it's way more fun to say. <laughs> hey, Tommy, how'd you love to be my soap on a rope? It's a whole lot more gratifying than, hey, come, uh, come heal me while I take on hordes of the undead. Uh, that is, that's pretty good. And the, the next thing I want to talk about is turtles. I like turtles. I like turtles. Turtling is actually an illegal move in my LARP set. Um, turtling means hiding behind a shield. Okay. In most LARPs, due to safety concerns, um, the feet, the heads, and the, the feet, the head, and the hand, hands, heads, if you are. Multiple heads, singular hand. Got it. Correct. <laughs> hey, we take all kinds. <laughs> yeah, hiding behind a shield so that only illegal targets are available to be hit. So that you cannot be hit from the from a, from a forward angle, except in your head, hands, or feet, you are considered turtling. Okay. In real life, great tactic. <laughs> in LARP, it's considered kind of cheap and underhanded, and a lot of LARPs do have rules against it, mine included. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna use my knowledge of role playing games and guess that the squishy is the mage or the person turtling. Or the person turtling. Squishy typically means in the most base sense that you don't have a whole lot of hit points. Right. Squishy is somebody that's kind of easily squished. He's kind of easily run over by monsters or other players because he doesn't have enough hit points or he doesn't have enough protectives because he hasn't made friends with the Healer's Guild yet. <laughs> He's got a bad reputation. So uh, is that how you get cauliflower ears, or is that not what that means? Uh, no, that is not what that means. We oh. talked about spell packets earlier. Mm -hmm. Cauliflower is essentially what has become the accepted and efficient way to create a quiver of spell packets. Again, I do have to apologize for the people listening at home because you can't see what I'm demonstrating. But to cauliflower, you will take between three and four spell packets and slide the rubber bands in between your fingers. Um, in, t in each gap between your fingers. So you have three to four between each 
set of fingers, and then you make a fist. Mm -hmm. it makes your whole hand resemble cauliflower. All right. But it is very efficient to reach across, grab a spell packet, and throw it. And reach across, grab a spell packet, and throw it. Oh, yeah. It's just another, again, with the ultralights and turtling and all these combat tactics, it's a way of making yourself faster and more efficient so that you can have more damage output and better odds against the things that the evil, evil DMs have put out to eat you. Is that what a glass battleship is? Something designed to eat you? Well, a glass battleship is a combination of a person who has got the ultralight, the turtling, and the squishy down pat. <laughs> Typically, a glass battleship is someone who outputs a ton of damage. They're really devastating on the battlefield until they get hit. They have put so much creation and so many levels into their offensive capabilities, their defensive capabilities are basically nil. So... Yes, Brutus up there is slaying goblins left and right, but one of them got around to his flank, and now he might be a little screwed because Brutus is a glass battleship. He's about to get at. Yeah, he's going to get at because the nasty, nasty DM has put out things to <laughs> really get him. All right, so I've only got a couple left, cool. uh, one of which is hold, which I assume is when people call in, you're like, I'm sorry, he's not available right now. Can you hold, please? I'm never available. Mentally, I'm never available. <laughs> I lark on the weekends. But a hold is a really, really important thing in any LARP. A hold is when all action stops and everything becomes out of game immediately. It's okay. An instant. More often than not, and to good effect, holds are called because there's a medical issue, there is a safety issue, there is a pressing emergency on the field, if you have a chariot drive through your play area, a hold will be called. I saw that part of Wayne's World where you're just like, <laughs> car! And then when the car goes by, you're like, game on! That's exactly what happens. A hold is, <laughs> is ended by the call of, uh, is there any reason for this hold to continue? If there is no reason, uh, a, count, a three count will begin. Three, two, one, game on. And then the hold is ended and all action resumes and everything becomes back into game immediately. I've seen this used to great effect for people who have stumbled over safety hazards and have dislocated knees. Ooh. I have seen people call holds because they have been stung by a bee. They are allergic. Typically, these things are medical or emergencies. Gotcha. Because it is imperative that all action stop so that we can take care of that situation right now. It's And a hold is the fastest, most efficient, easiest way to do that. All right. Well, the last item that I have on my giant list of words is clarify. Which is what I've been doing all night. It's so nice. And you've done a wonderful job. Uh, wonderful is not the word I would use. Splendiferous. You've done a splendiferous job. That's a LARP-worthy word. Thank you. Uh, clarify is the little brother to the hold. So you, as Tom of the Innocent Mage, is coming into LARP, and you've read our rule book, but you've mostly perused it. You flip through. So this, you don't know everything, and that's okay. Being a newbie means you don't know everything. Sure. And we will we'll teach you along the way. The LARP, LARP community is a very open and accepting community. So when you're in combat and someone throws a spell at you that you don't recognize, and you, you know that you've taken the effect of that spell, but you're not sure exactly what effect that is, you will call a clarify. As I said, it's the little brother to the hold. So the action between you and the other party stops. But not everyone else. Correct. Right. So you get a you get a moment of do what now? Ex that's basically what a clarify is. It's <laughs> just a much nicer way of saying that. Not everybody can pull off the drawl as well as you can. So if I if I were to get into combat with you and I were to say I was to enter combat with you and I would swing my sword and hit you and I would say twenty five arcane temporal damage, you would say clarify. To which I would say, well, an arcane damage goes through your magical protectives. And a temporal damage... That's a type of sushi. I know that one. Yeah, exactly. Not tempura. Oh. Temporal. Oh, it's oh a, okay. It's a time word. Watch Doctor Who. You'll get it. <laughs> temporal goes through your physical protectives. And now you understand the effects that you've taken. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any reason for this clarified to continue? No. Three, two, one. Game on. And no one outside of that small altercation of ours has stopped game has resumed, they've had their time, they've resolved combat, and we get to un come to a mutual understanding and you can learn the game a little bit better. Excellent. So, you've run out of words on your list. I have, but man, let me tell you, thank you 
We have gotten me one step closer to my LARPing adventure. It's so exciting. Speaking of your LARPing adventure, it has to be a shameless plug in every episode we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. The chapter that I'm ahead of, Ultra Mythos, is beginning beginning anew. We've taken a hiatus. We have we are under new management, namely me. And we are having our very first event, which we are titling Rebirth. And that will happen January 8th, 9th, and 10th of 2015. So if you live in the Central Virginia area, dear listener, and you would like to have a wonderful LARP time, please check us out on Facebook. You can follow Ultra Mythos. You can follow Tommy at Richmond Comics. And you can find out more about not only the Rebirth event, but the wonderful going on, goings on of Central Virginia and the LARP community. And I, I do want to reiterate, this will be my very first LARP adventure. I have never really LARP before, so I have just a few months to get, to get prepared. Well, that's what I'm here for. All right. Well, Danny, thank you very much for all of the knowledge. And thank you for having me. It's always wonderful when we can get together and talk about terribly nerdy things. <laughs> thank you once again for allowing me in your retail establishment. And remember, plot is a four-letter word. It sounds like something you step in. Have a good, e- good e- have a good evening, everybody. A giggity. <laughs>